viewers, YouTubers, humans, citizens, everyone. It has finally arrived. The grand, grand, grand finale of Let's Play Xenogears. This is the Benjinator. And this is, of course, a bittersweet occasion for me. I started this project in 2015, November of 2015, right after Thanksgiving. Granted, there were some very long periods where nothing was going on, but this has been my main solo LP for almost two years, like, you know, over a year and a half at this point. So now we finally arrived at the center of Deus, of Merkava. We're about to take on God himself. We're about to bring the greatest JRPG of all time to a close. So let's get going. All right, so here we go. Once you're all prepped, you can head into this final room. Like the one we've seen before. It's gonna look a little different in the end, but we're still gonna be, uh, we're gonna be taking on God. We're gonna be dealing with Krellian. We're gonna be seeing what his agenda is all about. And maybe we'll be able to finally put Miang to a rest too. She's been the most treacherous and annoying of all these characters. And most importantly, and I mean most importantly, we're going to be able to free Ellie. We are going to be able to make sure that Ellie is released from the prison that she's been a part of. Not just since the beginning of this game, not just because of the events, but basically since the beginning of, of the existence on this planet. Humans will finally achieve true freedom and no longer just be <laughs> components of an intergalactic weapon. Alright, so here we go. That this is an interesting part of the game, is that this is the the core of Dios is in the middle, but there's a bunch of sub bosses that you have to fight that are around Dios, and so you actually have a choice here, and they're kind of explaining this right now, is that you can go right to the middle orb and you can fight Dios, but if you do that, he's incredibly hard. He's got a billion abilities, and he can heal himself. Now, if you destroy these, if you destroy these orbs, what actually happens is that not only does he lose certain abilities, but he also has lower HP. So you want to—that's really the way to go—is that you want to fight these orbs to disable them. And so this is where things get kind of interesting because all you have is one of the blue memory cubes which allows you to switch out party members which means you can't heal there's no shopkeep johnny and so in this playthrough i just plow through with three characters now this is not the recommended way to do it but i just wanted to want to show you that it is possible so the first one that we're fighting is the sundal and the Sundal actually has the ability to uh, heal. So if you take out the Sundal, that means that the central Deus cannot heal. And so this will be the way to go. And so as usual, I pointed this out before, is that all of our, all of our current characters are equipped with double GNRs and a Z-Charger, as well as the uh, Omega, Omega 100 drives. And of course, the, uh, the best armor that you can get at Joe's shop, so that's the way to do it. And so what you can do is is you can equip that, you can have that same setup for your other characters as well, and you can switch them out. Um, the only thing that I would say is however you decide to do it, see that was easy, because we we're just so powerful. No more healing for Deus. But what you actually can do is to switch your characters out and use that setup and just take the GNRs off of your current ones NZ chargers and equip them on whatever whatever characters you replace them with. So if I wanted to, I could just I could take out Faye, C10, and Bard and put in you know Maria, Rico, and Billy, and just take off unequip them with the GNRs and the Z chargers and put that on them. You know, provided of course they had the Omega 100 upgrades. Um, the only thing that I would recommend is that you make sure that Faye is in the final final battle against Deus. Because he's going to be incredibly useful. And so this is the, uh, I believe this is the Marloot. And the Marloot's actually pretty easy. Uh, with, with, with our upgraded power, we shouldn't have too hard of a time. And the thing that Marloot also uses is, um... He does use a Fuel Drain attack, which is completely negated by our Z-Chargers. Like, 
I mean, it only takes away 50 fuel, first of all. And you can get this back really easily. Just literally hit charge once and you're fine. It's not a big deal. We, we, we basically have unlimited fuel, so it's not a big deal. So, uh, yeah, you just stabby, stabby. I just love it how you're basically just fighting a floor right now. My, uh, my friend, uh, Llama, always used to joke about this battle. He's like, are you playing the role of an intergalactic janitor by, like, essentially mopping the floor and fighting this thing? And it kind of seems like you're just fighting, you know, a spatial floor stain is what you're doing. But Marloot, even if you don't have the most optimal equipment, is really easy to deal with. I mean, as you can see, yeah, you can't use your power attacks, but these just do so much damage that you can, uh, you can dispense with them fairly quickly. And then it's going to be one more. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, so that the only thing that does damage is the little tail attack, and that's really nothing. And so yeah, you get rid of uh, Fuel Drain, which is an ability that Deus can use if you don't kill Marloot. Which kind of sucks, but not as much as healing. The healing thing is probably the worst. Um, because Deus, the core, when he heals himself, it's no joke. It's like 12,000 HP, so... You're really better off getting rid of these sub-bosses. Like, you know, even if you don't have the Omega 100 drives, just get rid of them. Get rid of these sub-bosses. Make your life easier. Okay, so this is Harloot. And Harloot has this really annoying attack, as you can see right here, where... He basically puts it into, uh, single combat mode. Where only one can attack at a time. And so what I do with c is I just put the booster on. Just to make it go a little bit faster. And then, you know, you, you do the C-Tan thing. You just land some attacks on him, and hopefully you get him to hyper mode. That's kind of been my strategy. And yeah, you're losing fuel, but you can always just take one turn and, uh, and get it back. It's really quite easy. So yeah, we're going to be doing this one more time. Or I, or I can use Kenjin. One of the two. Yeah, that's almost 12,000 damage. I guess I thought he was dead by then, but... So this attack, this this attack kind of blows. This is a uh, attack that, uh, yeah, it's ugh, that's a lot of damage. So that's that's one of the reasons why it's a good idea to uh, change out your party members. So heavenly anointment, that's the attack that it can be used. And heavenly anointment is is no joke. It's it it really, if Deus uses heavenly anointment, it does a ton of damage. So you're just making your life easier by doing this for the most part. Alright, so, one more sub-boss to go, and this one, this one is kind of annoying, uh, it's the, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the giant Scythe thing, I forget what his name is, yeah, th this dude, um, yeah, Metatron, yeah, he uses Earthly Anointment, which also hurts like a bitch, yeah, Heavenly and Earthly Anointment, these are not abilities that you want your final boss to be using, but yeah, it does does a ton of damage, but I think he only uses it once for the most part. Like it's 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 not something that he uses in rapid succession. And as usual, he's got fairly low amount of HP. He does counter attack sometimes. And I think this of, of all the sub bosses, I believe that this one has the most HP, so this one actually does take a little while. But as you can see, viewers, the the bosses themselves are not that hard. Um, oof, that's a that was a nasty attack. Uh, just, the thing about them is that you have to, you have to not take too much damage. And in this case, we don't have to worry about fuel, because we got the Z-Chargers. Um, so yeah, like, you can kind of think about, well, what if I decided to do, like, the Output 70 engine with the, like, with, uh, 3,000 fuel, or 7,000 fuel, or what have you. Well, that's fine. I mean, you could do that, just understand that your... There's a big difference between a power output of 70 and a power output of 100. Like, it's it's an astronomical difference. Like, I, I, I think I tried this once, and even with the GNRs equipped, you know, you did at most, like, I don't know, something like uh, 3,000 damage a turn. So here we go. Here's the battle against the central core. And I should, I should warn you guys, this is actually a really close battle. I almost lost this one. But, um... The fact that I was able to get through it is kind of cool. Like, it's a very, like, skin-of-your-teeth battle. And really the reason is just because, um, 
these guys had limited HP. That was kind of the problem, is like, they, they're kind of battle-worn, but I decided to go for it anyway. And, you know, how it turns out is actually kind of fun. And this is where, really where you get to see the power of Xeno Gears. The power of phase, fantastic, magnificent, perfect, ideal contact with the Zohar gear. Dappity do. Yeah, and also these things. This is what makes this battle really annoying is that those little tiny angels keep attacking you. And it's not a lot of fun. It's, uh, it can be difficult. Zappity doo da, zappity day. My oh my, we're getting hit by lasers. It's really annoying getting hit in the face. But here we go. Bat's gonna do his thing. I think my aim was to get up to hyper mode. In all cases, and you might as well. Hyper mode will get this guy's HP down as, as fast as humanly possible. And that's really the intent here, is to try to just wear down Deus as quickly as possible. Ugh. Sorry folks, I'm a little winded right now because um, this was the, I think the fourth or fifth video I'm doing today. Um, because I just really wanted to get to the end. Like, I wanted to finish this game up. Ooh, Thunderbolt hurts quite a bit. And so this is the attack that you really have to watch out for. And this, I believe, is when we lose uh, Cetan and Bart. So unfortunately, you can't cancel out this attack. Like, there's not a sub-boss that you can fight to make this go away. Which, um, which sucks. I kind of wish that you could dispense with this thing. But Faye is going to be a hero, as you'll see in just a little bit. Once you absorb this ultimate attack. Ooh, yeah. 9,000. Eesh. Eesh, eesh, eesh. Yeah, and I, I suppose that if you equip some, like, you know, ether defenses, then you'd be able to deal with this okay. But really, I, I'm mostly concerned about making sure that you get to the end. So, as you can see, I, I thought that I was going to lose at this point. I was, I was really impressed that I somehow managed to win. So, here we go. And we're going to attack one more time. And I'm not going to go into hyper mode. But now we are. Or, and I am going to go into hyper mode. What I did not use was my level 3 attack. I could have used my level 3 attack. But I decided to wait and go, 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 go into hyper mode. So yeah, this was about the time that I thought that maybe I wasn't going to win. But now we're going to see Kishin. Yeah, baby. Kishin power. And so this is probably the most fun Xeno Gears attack. He does a little spinny move. Now... I'm not sure, I mean, I think that you could actually do more damage if you if you use your level 3 attack. And so now we got him. Isn't that great? We killed God, woohoo! So I think you can actually do more if you did like a level 3 attack on top of a regular X strike. It would have probably done over t uh, 10,000 damage, but you know what? With hyper mode, you get three uh, quadruple nines. So why not? Why not just do that? Deus, we've defeated you. You're gone. Krellian, your plans for world domination are dispensed with. Or are they? So that supposedly is the core of Deus. Fading away in your prototypical JRPG manner. Good stuff. It's very good stuff. Oof. Well. Well now. What have we here? Big white screen. Well, now that uh, you've destroyed Deus, <laughs> everybody's gear is going to stop working. Looks like FaZe still, still is okay. Yep, Rico. I'm sorry. But your gear days are over. Dun, 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 dun. So this is why it was so confusing, is that, you know, the Z I thought the Zohar was the, the big eye thing that was popping out of the ground way up north, but I guess, um, but I guess the, the new Deus integrated it as well, something like that. Like, don't, I, I try not to think about it too much, because otherwise my brain starts to hurt. I mean, most things in this game, like 99% of it, they make sense, they're addressed, there's not a lot of plot holes, that's the only aspect that I'm a little bit confused about. And I'm pretty sure there's, like, some internet explanation somewhere. All right, so... 
Sweet. It looks like Ellie's going to be okay. We just need to go in there and find her. Since uh, Faye's the only the only gear that <laughs> that exists on Earth now that can actually function. Oh, no. Oh, no. So it turns out we didn't kill Deos. Is that what's going on? Deos reactivated. Oh, shit. Oh, no. See, this is, li this is like the entire story of the second disc. Oh, the wave existence. Maybe he's part of it. Aha. So maybe, maybe we're okay after all. Because the wave existence ostensibly is a good guy, right? 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 Well, good guy, girl, thing, entity, higher plane existence. Oh, shit. A dimensional shift might be a bad thing. Uh-oh. Uh... It's... Yeah, Doc, what's, what's gonna happen? Are we all gonna die? Oh, shit. Annihilated. Damn it. We have to go through all this trouble to shut down Deos. And that stupid wave existence decides to, you know, go back to its own plane of plane of living and annihilates us in the same process. It seems like whatever we do, there's going to be some scenario where the, where the entirety of life gets eliminated. And to be quite frank, there's not a lot of us left. I mean, you've been... You've seen, viewers, you've seen that, 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 uh, snowfield hideout. There's like a handful of people there. There's a handful of people at the, the Kids Love Coliseum. And then there's a bunch of people, weirdos, hanging around the Newman Islands. But who cares about them? This is the end? Is this how the game ends? That we all get destroyed? Ugh. God, I hope not. Yeah, Bart's like, <laughs> went through all this trouble. We lost so many times. Oh shit. No. Okay, for some reason Rico has the ability to tell what types of vibrations are different. It's the weirdest thing. Uh hey, what's happening? Oh, it's flying away. So oh, okay, so maybe that's good. Maybe maybe it won't like explode and destroy all of humanity. Maybe it'll just go out in space. Oh, there we go, yeah. Can't we just, like, you know, point our fingers and give a thumbs up? Well, thanks, Ellie. We appreciate your sacrifice. But, of course, Faye's gonna go after her. I know he's gonna go after her. Ugh. I mean, th that would make a pretty good ending if, uh... You know, Ellie just sacrificed herself for the greater good of humanity just like she did 500 years ago. I have a feeling that's not going to happen. Yeah, now he's, he's going after her. <laughs> I, I, I may have spoiled that by about 30 seconds, viewers, but you knew it was coming. You knew that Fei Fong Wong, the hero, the contact, the immortal one, Jesus, Satan, whatever you want to call him, He's going to try to save his girlfriend. Oh, I have a feeling Faye will make it. Come on, Faye. You survived... You survived the baptismal ceremony in Kislev, which was obviously the most strenuous thing that you had to deal with. Well, that and actually getting through the, um... I think surviving the... Sole like, Krellian's lab on Solaris is probably the most difficult thing. Getting lost, seeing how food was produced... Dealing with uh, those spooky revelations by the Gazel Ministry. I mean, I still think that was kind of like the defining moment of this game. That was my, uh, you know, climax. Although the game's not over yet. The game's not over yet. Faye still has to go and, and save her. So yeah, viewers, if you thought that that was the final battle, eh, not quite. Although, you could have fooled you. It could have fooled you. I mean, seriously, the way that Deus was dying there was getting torn apart. I, I, uh... I, I sincerely believed when I played this game that that was gonna be... That was gonna be it. I mean, that's how most JRPGs end. You know, if, if a, uh... If a boss disintegrates slowly and has, like, an overdone... 
death, then yeah, usually that means that's the end of the game. I'm counting on you, partner. Oh, come on, Faye. Xenogears, the gear, is like a fairly new one. I mean, unless this is just an evolved Weltall, then I can understand that, but... I mean, Weltall... Weltall's your boy, Faye. Weltall's your partner. Weltall got you through the entire first disc. I mean, even Weltall 2 was a very short-lived thing. Alright, time to chase after God. I'm gonna make him go away. And so forth. Alright, so here we go. Here we go. Take on the Almighty One. God once again. Oh, that looks that looks bad. Like a big purple sphincter thing. Nasty. Looks nasty. So bad. No. Well, that's the end of the game, folks. I hope you enjoyed uh let's play Xeno Gears. Thank you guys for watching. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I'm kidding. Now face suddenly naked. As well as Ellie, so maybe this will work out for them. At least they're both naked. Ah. Oh. What is that? That looks like bad zombie makeup. Uh. Okay, so I guess we're inside Deus. Oh. Okay, so this is all mental imagery. Oh, who is that? Oh man, Krellian! What have you done to yourself? Are you lacing yourself with makeup? I mean, seriously. I know you've been around for like, you know, 500 years or what have you, but... Come on, dude, you gotta take care of yourself a little bit better. You were looking a lot better when you were in your regular human form, you know. Nobody would, nobody would have guessed that you were, all, you were five centuries old, but now, I would definitely guess that you're five centuries old. Ah. So, what Krillian is basically proposing is... I guess this was kind of his uh, agenda the whole time. Is that he wanted to go to a higher plane of existence. I mean, this is almost kind of like a sci-fi cliche. And JRPG cliche is like returning to nothingness. And so what he's talking about here is returning to a time where existence was just waves. Kind of like the Big Bang Theory. Like, it was just energy. It wasn't matter. There wasn't any solid mass. There weren't rocks. There weren't stars. There weren't planets. And so this is uh, very similar to, I mean, a lot of books, but I'm also thinking about, like, Neon Genesis Evangelion, where, you know, the whole intent of the instrumentality project was to become one form and to get rid of individual human wills. And of course, Faye's kind of saying, no, 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 humans, they might not be perfect, but you know, they still have, there's some redeeming quality in the constant ability to perfect oneself. Like, it's, it's a very classic argument, what you're seeing right here. Um, and again, you know, Shinji Akari in Evangelion was faced with a similar dilemma. Although, you know, he's not nearly as cool as Faye. Faye is, Faye's got superpowers. Faye's thousands of years old. He's not some confused 14-year-old uh, kid. But yeah, I mean, like, even if you look in uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, there is the idea of humans evolving to a state of pure thought, and Krillin just kind of wants to go back to that. So he's saying, yeah, humans are flawed, blah, 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 individual wills are not a great thing. I mean, I'm not trying to downplay the dialogue. I'm just trying to give, give you guys a real sense of what he's trying to project here. The idea of, uh, he's got a very soured view of mankind, and Faye's still being hopeful. So, that's kind of his proposition right here. Waves and nothingness. Ah. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting because, in this regard, Krellian was kind of even seeing, his agenda was even more, uh metaphysical than that of the Gazel Ministry and Cain and uh, Miong, because they all just wanted to be reunited with Deos and 
ostensibly fly around in a spaceship and take over the universe, basically. Whereas Krellian says, no, I want to, I want to return to a higher plane of existence. So that's, that's a little bit more. I mean, you know, I can't really speak for the, the dead ministry now and everybody else, but I have a feeling that was kind of the, uh, that was kind of the whole deal. I mean, we can assume at this point that, uh, Myung might be, might be shut down, like her will just doesn't exist anymore. So. Now he says, show me the power of humans. Yay. So here we go. Now we're going to be fighting the true last battle, folks. Although this one is not nearly as difficult as the last one. But that is the Urobolus. The, uh, the guardian of the Urobolus ring, which is a integral part of the DNA of both Faye and Ellie. The ability to transfer information to multiple generations. This was all talked about uh, in the first disc, if you recall. And yes, you will get to fight the Urobolus in your gear. It's not just going to be naked Fey, like, you know, using his kung fu powers. It's going to be a little bit better than that. The so Urobolus uh, does these kind of nasty attacks, and some of them get really much more powerful, but uh, I've never lost this battle before, so it's really not that hard. All, all you want to do is you want to get to uh, your hyper mode, and that's really all there is to it. Is that you just have to make sure not to, uh, you just have to make sure not to die. And not dying is a fairly easy proposition, actually. Um, especially now with our, our super engine. It'll be so good, so yeah. Oh yeah, we're going into, going into hyper mode. I just love, I think that's so cool how his wings light up like, like, like there's that, just that, those like little sparks of light that come out. Those little particles. That, that, that emerge when he's in uh, hyper mode. So yeah, this this doesn't really make that much of a difference at that point, at this point, because as you notice, when Urobolus was not blocking my attacks, it, it was still taking like 3,000 damage, but I mean, just to, just to ensure that it'll be a thing, um, you do want to use, yeah, see, that's, that's, that's a pretty nasty attack, about 6,000, but uh, beyond this, there's not... There's not really a whole lot more that is done. So now I'm just using Goat Necks, Somersaulting. Still the same amount of damage. And then I believe uh, the next one I use is going to be... Uh, oh, okay, I use Kishin again. I thought I was going to use, like, the 10 fuel attack, but I, I suppose not. I suppose I thought that that was not worth risking. But yeah, another another collection of 9s. So at this point, your Bolus is almost dead. That fire attack that did 6k damage, she doesn't use very much. And that, of course, does nothing. It does jack shit. Boom! Okay, so that did almost nothing. But it just, it's just amazing the difference in this game between when an enemy blocks an attack and when they don't. It's like just... Uh, it's like night and day. It does make the game a little bit more challenging. I mean, I would say that overall, this is not a game that's particularly difficult, but... There are, it does have its moments, which I appreciate. Sometimes where it's challenging. And there goes Urobolus. Not that hard. We, we showed Crowley in a thing or two. Does that mean we get to release Ellie now? Please tell me we get to release Ellie. I hope so. Yep, and she's all naked too. And apparently in this, uh, in this game, nipples and butts don't exist. As well as penises. Everybody, everybody's like quite angelic. Uh, it's so 90s and censored. Uh, so it looks like Krellian let, her, let everybody go, it seems. Ah, uh, yeah. So I guess Krellian was, was convinced at the last, on the last day. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Ah. Uh. Well, looks like Krillian understood at the last minute after all. That's all kinds of crazy. Um, yeah, so it looks like Krillian at the end of the day was, uh, 
was fairly pleased with how everything went. Maybe not, well, maybe not pleased, but he seems to be okay with it. Such a weird villain. He makes all these elaborate plans to destroy humanity and revive God and go to a higher plane of existence, and then apparently he just, he's okay with the whole idea of letting everybody go. Charlene, you are a bizarre, strange individual. But, um... But yeah, this is kind of a testament to humanity. To the, uh... The love between Ellie and Faye. And for, uh... The human will as a whole. Of course, that's something that, uh... You know, you see... As a very common theme in a lot of JRPGs, but... In this game, I believe that it does it in a much more sophisticated and superior way. But yeah, this idea of the flesh becoming one. Nice romantic sentiment there. But yeah, this, uh... No, I think it's great. I think just this idea of the human well overcoming, despite imperfections. I think that's one of the big themes of this game, is this idea that humans definitely are not perfect, but... Um, understanding and bringing together, whether it's friendship, whether it's love, whether it's just kind of a common cause, is something to hope for. So, it's good stuff. And now we get to see the closing anime of this game, which is a uh, closing cutscene. And uh, I, I rather enjoy this one. It's a little, it feels a little lo-fi, but I think it's still pretty good. We're just going to watch this. Let's return to our planet. Of course, they're not wearing any clothes. That light. It's the point of contact with our world. But the dimensional shift has already begun. Will we make it in time? Can you run? If we're together, I can. Ah, so sweet. Now you might have to run faster than that. Oh, that doesn't look good. Ugh. Sprint, sprint, sprint. Come on, Ellie, don't trip. Not at this critical juncture. inside a bubble, it seems. Krillian, you... Also not wearing any clothes. There's no time. This place is about to be destroyed. Now, there is no more God. This is no longer their planet. This is your home planet that you are now standing on. Krillian... You aren't going, are you? No. Since that time, I have stopped being human. I've committed so many sins that any attempt at living like a human is impossible. The only one who could have forgiven me was God. That's not true. I know they would understand. There's still plenty of time to atone for your sins. You of all people could do it. Always the peacemaker, eh, Lacan? Perhaps that's what it means to be human. 
But regardless, I cannot go. It's something I've already decided. I go to walk with God. Even if there's no place left for me upon my return. I must go now. Where is he going? Alien. Actually, oh, he's got wing power. I envy you too. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like if Crowley went back to Earth, he'd get, you know, he would get butchered alive by most of the people there. <laughs> I'm not sure how forgiving they would be. So it might be the smart move. Even though, obviously, Faye, like, you know, is kind of hopeful that. Humans have the capacity to forgive. I think they can only go for so far. I mean, mass genocide experimentation through nanomachines. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, let's see if those two make it back. Waves from the explosion disrupted the ionosphere, making it impossible to get a visual. The hell is this guy? They were probably caught up in the explosion. That's a lie! <laughs> He'll come back. He promised us he would. I know it. There's his gear, so... I hope so. Come on, Faye. I believe... Uh, looks so nice in anime form, too. Choo choo! No! You're ruining this for me. Uh, awful. Woo! There's Rico. The whole crew. Ah, they got their clothes back! Hooray! <laughs> and Ellie's still wearing that damn Solaris uniform! He needs a wardrobe change, Jesus. Crazy. Woo! They made it back to Earth. So nice. So nice indeed. All right. So what you're hearing is a uh, small two of pieces. That's what the translation is. Um, and you heard this song in uh, music box form earlier on in the game uh, at the beginning, and then it kind of shows up every once in a while. The so Tetsuya Takahashi was the genius behind this game. Masato Kato, also a great writer. Um, the rest of these names I don't really know, of course, except for Yatsuruni Yatsu Matsuda who was the magical, mystical, uh, musical composer for this game. Oh my god, so... I'm torn right now. This was, by far, the biggest and most ambitious uh, LP that I've done. And it probably will remain that way, even when I do future projects. Uh... I'm definitely hoping that the, obviously, that the content of my channel and the quality of my videos is going to continuously improve. But as far as, like, taking on video games and especially JRPGs uh, to cover and commentate on, I, I feel like this is probably going to be the biggest, the longest project that I will have in a long time. So this is a huge milestone. It's massive. Um... When I first started LPing, which was about three years ago, there were three games that I knew that I absolutely positively had to do. The first one was Chrono Cross, which was my first LP. I cranked that out in about a month and a half uh, because I knew that game very well. It was one of my early favorites, and I felt like if I wanted to start off with a, with a Let's Play, that would be the one to do, even though there's a billion Chrono Trigger LPs out there. Saga Frontier, of course, I knew I had to do because I felt that there weren't a lot of Saga Frontier LPs out there. 
and it would be really kind of a fun game to dissect and to pick apart. It's a very difficult game if you guys have watched that LP. It's something that, uh, you know, takes a lot of finesse to be able to play. But Xenogears was a game that I knew I had to do because it's my absolute favorite. Um, and so just, to, just taking a minute to think about this game as a whole, the story is unparalleled. I have not seen a single JRPG or even other video game that even comes close to the level of depth and uh, just attention to detail and foreshadowing and dialogue as well as Xenogears. I mean, a lot of the conventions that you see in this game storyline-wise, you do see in a lot of JRPGs, you know, there's some ancient evil that arises and becomes God and your goal is to destroy God. Yeah, that's been done in a lot of JRPGs, but uh, not quite to the extent and the detail and just the like the level of character development and the way that all these like interweaving agendas and plans come together. You don't really see that in any of the other uh, JRPGs that I've played, certainly. And I should mention, too, that there are other titles in what is known as the Xeno series you know, unrelated thematic games, unofficial sequels. There's, of course, the Xeno Saga Trilogy. I've played two of the three games, and those are actually quite good. And I've actually watched my friend Tommy play Xenoblade. That was a fantastic game, too. But those games do not hold a candle to this one, as far as story goes. Now, gameplay-wise, I will say that this game does have uh, its quirks. I mean, I really like the battle system. I like the death blows. I thought the jumping was a little sloppy, and of course the camera angling was a little bit weird. Um, so that could be something that could have been improved upon, even for the late 1990s. And I should say that, um, this is a sort of a final comment, that I thought that even though the second disc wasn't exactly the way that uh, Tatsuya Takahashi had hoped for, I think it still pans out pretty well. They were able to compress a lot of story into a single disc, you get a real sense of conclusion of the rest of the story. Like, all of these build-ups find a sense of closure in the second disc, and I think that's really good. Um, I should mention, too, that this was the first time I did a post-game commentary in the second half of this disc. Um, but I don't think it's going to be something I'm going to be continuing. After this, I'm probably going to go back to simultaneous commentary. Although I think I'm going to be doing it in a slightly different style because I did enjoy the the intro and outro part of making these videos. So that's something I'm going to be keeping up with. Um, and you, there's going to be some exciting stuff going on in this channel in the future. I will say that there are going to be some more videos that I will be adding to this playlist that are Xeno Gears related. Probably some bonus videos about showing off like Ellie's death blows and Emerelda and so forth. Uh, but I also will be including a few videos discussing the plot and some of the finer points of the story of this game because Xenogears, I'm never really done with Xenogears. Uh, there's always more to be said and more to be done. Um, so even though I have played through the, the main, you know, the, I've done the main LP for this, uh, there probably will be other content in the future. So I hope you guys... We'll be there to watch that. And I'm hoping that in the future I will be adding some more kind of like little featurettes having to do with Xeno Gears. And uh, also just generally the projects that I'm looking into for the future. Uh, there's going to be... There's a, there's a few things I have lined up. I mean, I've gotten through the games, the three games that I said that I absolutely had to do. But I've got some pretty great ideas about what I'm going to be doing for the future. I'm actually hoping to probably do some um, some PlayStation 2 games. I'm going to be moving forward a generation. And actually probably some games that I haven't done before. I'm going to be delving into blind LPs, even though I said I would never, ever do such a thing. I think I'm going to give it a shot. So anyway, I hope you guys, if you made it through this entire Let's Play of Xenogears, I applaud you. Even if you're watching portions, I, I, I hope that you have enjoyed the journey uh, exploring this deliciously perfect JRPG. And I sincerely hope that I get to see you guys as viewers in future projects, because there's going to be a lot more 
on the Benjinator's channel, and there's a lot of good things coming. So farewell. I hope you had fun and have a fantastic day, evening, wherever. Whatever you want to do, do it. Humanity is free now, so go enjoy yourself.